Howdy, howdy, Ben here. Just a quick follow-up on the volume shading tutorial I did a little while ago. I uh, just wanted to clarify a couple points and go a little bit further with it. First, to set this up working correctly, here's the default Blender workflow. I'm in version 2.74. You will notice that the Blender render engine is the default engine in the uh, default user settings, so I'm going to change that to the Cycles render engine because that's what you need for volumes. Also, I like to add a small window down in the lower right corner to uh, actually show cycles working. And uh, th the trick here is that this is how I always like my setup. I always want it to start out this way. Pretty much 99% of the time, not always, but nearly always. So what can I do to make it so I don't have to do this every time? And what you can do is press Control U and it says save your startup file, you bet. I'm gonna click OK. What that means is if I were to say change the windows as I work and add some other ones and delete that and maybe move this guy over. Save it or don't save it when it's time to reload your startup file or just boot up Blender. It has to start somewhere and it's going to start now with this window and with Cycles Render because I pressed Control U and saved my startup file. So that makes life a lot easier for me. So here we are. Uh, if you've seen my other tutorial, this should make a lot of sense. If you haven't, you may want to take a look at it. I'm going to go pretty quick here. I'm going to move this guy up one pixel, move the whole thing up a teeny bit just because it makes life easier later on for funky intersections. Scale that up maybe 10. Here we are. Let's go ahead and go into Cycles View so I can see what's going on. I'll take my light, use some nodes on my light, and set the strength to something bigger like 500. That's small and you can't see it, but I up the strength to 500. Now in my block, I'm going to use nodes. Instead of doing a surface node, I'm going to use a volume node, a volume scatter shader. I'm going to run that into volume, and now I have my nice little guy. You will notice that the shadows aren't working correctly there as I change my density. Shadows don't work. That's because I need to go out and back in, and now it works. That is obviously a bug. It doesn't bother me that much. Uh, but we should probably report it to be responsible Blender citizens, but I'm not going to do that right now. Now to, to run this, uh, to control this density, let's do what we did last time of runaway texture. We'll run the FAC into the density, so you can see that starting to happen there. Uh, we're going to use our math node to control the density. So now we get a very, very thick block of Swiss cheese. And uh, let's give ourselves another math node to control the size of those cubes. We're going to use a less than node. I think it's less than 0 0.9. There we go. 0 0.1, 0 0.05. We get these nice little dots. And then I'm going to turn the scale up. Wait a minute. No. Scale goes down. They get bigger. Is that what it is? That's right. Scale goes down. They get bigger. It's kind of counterintuitive, but so it goes. So here I've got these very, very dense spheres with the value of 100. Turn that down to the value of 1, and they're very, very soft. And go up to a value of 5, and we kind of get a happy medium maybe seven. And if I add color to this, this is something I kind of got wrong last time, you'll notice you get the additive complement. So yellow gives me blue, which is the additive complement to yellow. Green gives me magenta. Blue gives me yellow. Cyan gives me red and vice versa. Magenta gives me green. You know, if you've taken any kind of class on color, read a book on color, those uh, complements should make a lot of sense. The way you get out of that is you or get around that, is you add another shader, a volume absorption this time, and you combine these two together with an add shader. Now they're going into each other. Of course, they don't look correct because they're not the same color. So to control that color, I'm going to add an input RGB. It's just a basic color node. I'm going to add that to the input of both colors. And then I'm going to make sure that the volume absorption is reading density correctly, because right now you can see it's just sort of like a block. I need to run my density into that. And now I'm getting what? Nothing, because there is no color going into it, Let's, or at least the color is gray. Let's do green. And now look, it looks like green. Isn't that exciting? That is very exciting. I get a little too excited doing these tutorials, as you can tell. Um, green shader, a blue shader, red shader. Obviously, the density is going to control how the light moves through it. Um, we've talked about settings that you can do um, for Blender universal settings for how it reads these things. But for the most part, make this guy a bit brighter, even maybe 1,000. We've got a nice little node set up here. So let's just take a look at this real quick. These three nodes are controlling the density, both how dense it is, 
where I cut off those spheres, which we talked a lot about in the previous tutorial, and uh, then the actual thing that generates the texture. Here I am controlling the color, okay, kind of separate from everything else, and these three nodes are kind of like their own basic volume shader. In fact, I'm going to make a group out of this now by typing Control G with the three selected, and now that's created a group. If I select that group and press Tab, it takes me into that group, and you can see what's going on here. I've got my group input, four inputs that match up with these four inputs. I've got them going to color, to density, to color, to density. Now the trick here is that I've got color being used in two different places, and really I only need one input. Same thing with density. So what I'm going to do is my top density input, instead of just going to the bottom one, I'm also going to send it to the top one. So now my second density input is no longer needed. My first color input, only going to one, is now going to go to two. And so my second color and my second density inputs are now no longer needed. Press the letter N to bring up this little window here, this little shelf. And in the interface section, you can see all four inputs. And this bottom two, as we said before, we really don't need. So I'm going to press the X for color, the X for density. And now because I fiddled with these a bit, I just like to change them to be all capital letters. That way I can keep track that it's something I did instead of a default. It's all me. And shader, instead of saying shader, I'm going to call it two volume. Because see how it goes to the volume shader? Now there won't be any confusion. So now if I get out of that, you can see I have one density input, one color input, and it's going two volume. And I'm going to call this basic volume shader. Now if I really want to get picky, and why not, you can see that Density is on the bottom and colors on the top of both of these nodes, but in my input, density is on the top. So I'm just going to change that, select density in this interface window, and push the down arrow, switches their places. Look how much nicer that looks. Doesn't that look nicer? It really does. Um, for some reason, that just makes me happier. So there was a before, and there it is after. Nice. Before, after. Okay, so now I've got this set up just how I want it. I'm going to tab out of my basic volume shader. And uh, now if I change my color of my RGB input, it's fine. In fact, if I remove that input, I can actually change the color directly on my group, which makes things pretty easy. There's a nice cyan shader. Likewise, I can adjust my density. But of course, I don't get the texture, so I need those textures to work. Now, just to give an example of what's going on here, how this can be used in different ways, if I duplicate, move along. No, nah, I'm not going to duplicate. Let's make a, let's make a new box. Mesh cube. This guy has no texture applied to him, obviously. So let's make a texture for him. And we're going to make this guy have a volume. But this time, instead of going through the whole process we went through before, because I've made that basic volume shader group, I can press Shift A, group, basic volume shader. And I can plug that right into the volume. Now I can do things like tweak the color and all the stuff we were doing before. Or if we wanted to, for instance, I can add a texture, but this time instead of a Voronoi texture, let's add a wave texture and send that fact into the density. And maybe we want to do the same thing we did before, math node, multiply, and another math node, but this one's going to be less than, and I, hopefully you're pulling your hair out right now saying, why don't you just make up a group for those two things? And we could. We could definitely do that. The trick being that if you changed uh, an attribute inside that group, it would change for everything in all groups. And we'll do a demonstration of that in a second. We're going to set this to be scale goes down, size goes up. Let's set the scale to maybe 1.5. And we'll make this nice and thin. And you can see these nice little sheets of blueness that I've got. Okay. And let's say we would like these to always be the same color. So if I were to set an RGB input like we did in the other case, but what I really want is I want both of these cubes to give me the same color. I don't know why it doesn't seem like a good idea, but let's just say for some reason the client wants it, whatever. We've got to do it. So let's say it's going to be green. I can just select this RGB input and I can control G, group just that color. There is no input, there is an output, okay? 
And I'm going to call this, instead of basic volume shader, I'm going to call this color. Okay. Now I'm going to select my... Oh, I did that to the first box. I did that to the Voronoi texture, didn't I? Yes, I did. So that's great. Here I am in the second texture where we're doing the bands. And I'm going to add a group color that's there now. And I'm going to run that in. And the thing to keep in mind here is that if I tab into this color and I change the color, it changes for everything because the group is shared. In fact, if you look here, you see this number two, meaning this group is being used twice, as is this group. If I were to duplicate it, it's being used three times. Not necessarily by three different, three different objects. It just shows up somewhere in the Blender project file three times. Delete it, now I have two times. If I went into my color here, rather than doing something simple like RGB, I could do another texture, maybe a noise texture, and I could run that color into that. And now I've got kind of this funky noise going on, and I could do a hue saturation, and I could up the saturation on this to something crazy big like 10, and get these crazy big colors, and up the value maybe so they're really bright and just completely artificial. Um, I could change the scale in here to be larger dots, uh, give it some distortion, whatever. It'll happen with every single layer if, I, uh, if they're both using that same group. And if at a certain point you want to do something different with the group, the best thing to do, I think, is just to press Option G to ungroup that color. Okay, now it's no longer grouped, even though the group will still exist for my bands. For my Voronoi texture, there's no longer a group, and so now I could do something like scale it differently, but scale it way, way down so it's just big, big blocky chunks, whereas the other one remains fine-tuned. So groups can give you lots of options for this sort of thing, um, and also you can set up these basic volume shaders. In a future tutorial, perhaps very soon to be done, I will show you how you can use this basic volume shader uh, across multiple projects. And that's it. I hope you learned something on this, and I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.